Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. Coming this way is my beautiful wife, Illinois. Little angel, Natasha Alexander. All right, right, what we're going to do, we're going to do Leviticus 22, but before we do that, we're going to do Luke 22, the Passover, the Passion. So we have combination of Passover and uh, Resurrection of Christ. Right. Because we are on the weekend of 5th through 13th. The 5th through the 13th, the Days of Unleavened Bread, we're going to read about them. And now is what, the 7th? Yeah. So just, you know, if you've got any wine, grab some wine. If you've got any flatbread, crackers, saltines, anything like that, you can do communion with us. If not, go get some and do it tomorrow. You can watch the podcast, right? Right. Yep. Are we red eye? Let's say a prayer. Oh, yeah, let's say a prayer. Father in heaven. Thank you so much, Lord God, for this time. Special time, the holiest day, the holiest time in the year where you offered your life, your blood, that we might be cleansed. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So now instead of cow's blood and sheep's blood, we have your precious blood, Jesus Christ, that cleanses us from all sin. We thank you so much that you went through that passion for us, Lord God. We ask you right now to open your word to our minds, to our souls, our hearts, our spirits, and let us be more like you. Like John the Baptist said, I have to decrease. He has to increase. Increase your love, your faith, your grace within us by your Holy Spirit. And bless this word right now to our minds. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. Not Easter. There's one place in the Bible in Acts that says Easter. Mistranslation. In the Greek, the word is Paschal. Paschal is Passover, not Easter. Easter, Esther, the pagan satanic goddess of fertility, was, uh, it was fertility, it was bunnies that are quick, like the Easter bunny, eggs, pagan sign of fertility. And so what they did, they had great orgies in uh, the springtime, celebration of new life, right? They brought it into the church, which God said, what? Don't worship me the way the pagans do. Well, that's exactly what the churches have done. And you have your nice Easter ham on Easter. Hey, woe unto those who eat swine's flesh. You got to get Easter. I know it's a biggie, right? Get it out of your mentality completely. Well, it's the wrong name, but it's not the wrong meaning. We're celebrating of resurrection, resurrection of Christ. Right. So we're celebrating Passover, and we continue celebration and finalize with His resurrection. Right. And it has to be named as it should be named. Right. The day of the resurrection of Christ, which is tomorrow. Right. And today we're going to take, uh, we already basically passed Passover, but we would like to uh, share with you our Passover time was uh, very last at uh, dinner of Christ right. with wine and bread and full of his words, what he asked us to do. Right. And Jesus said, I'll give you one sign. The Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Just real quick. Good Friday to Sunday. Don't make three days and three nights. It makes one and a half to two nights and two days. You can't get Good Friday and Easter, all right? Jesus Christ was crucified on Wednesday. Well, I thought he was crucified before the Sabbath, the Holy Sabbath. The Sabbath day, Saturday, wasn't the Holy Sabbath. Thursday was the Holy Sabbath. You count it out, Thursday night, Friday, I don't want to get way into it. That's three days and three nights, the way God did it, not the way the churches believe. As usual, churches are deceived. 
nothing new. Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill the Son of God for Passover. Now there's a sacrifice for you. The Son of God sought how they might kill Him, for they feared the people. There's fear. Opposite of love is what? Fear. That's what they live in. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenant to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Another quick little note. These aren't Jews. These aren't the brethren, the descendants of Judah. These are Kenites, descendants of Cain. Cain's father was who? The devil, Satan the devil. Who was the first murderer of his own twin brother? Cain, the murderer. Why? Because his father is murder. His father is death. And that's why Christ came. Hebrews 2, 4, to do away. I think it's Hebrews. It might be, you know, it's around Hebrews. Uh, to do away with death. That is the devil. That's what Christ did on the cross. He did away with the devil. He did away with death. We're waiting for eternal life. And they were glad. And they coveted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Can't do it around the people. The people will attack you and kill you. They love Jesus Christ. Just like we do. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare? And he said unto them, behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water follow him into the house where he entered. Normally um, speaking, men carried goat skins full of wine, full of water, whatever they're drinking. Women carried the pitchers. So this was a little unusual. He was easy to spot. And he shall say unto the good man of the house, the master saith unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room, furnished. There make ready. And they went and found, as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Something they didn't want to hear. They don't want to hear about his suffering. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Took the cup, blessed it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your son's blood. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
Likewise also, the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goeth as it was determined. But woe unto that man by whom he is betrayed. Letting Judas know what's going on. Be careful. And they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. See, Judas and Satan, the pretty sharp people, aren't they? Pretty shrewd. Come off as really holy, really awesome, really evil, really deceptive. You know how many people I know like that on this earth today? Way too many. They come off as so pure and holy, and they're dead man's bones inside, just like Judas was, just like Satan is, son of perdition, to burn with them. He's already judged, only being on earth that's judged right now. Burn from within. By God, God is the consuming fire. Can't Satan repent? No, he can't repent. He was with God for millions of years in the first earth age. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles. Oh, and then, wait, 24. And there was also strife among them. Now they're starting to worry. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? The ego. Sounds like Satan's getting into all of them. And he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship, the heathen, the satanic, lord over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors, the leaders, the governors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that does serve. What did Jesus do? Washed his disciples' feet, right? They didn't wash his feet. The high priest didn't wash the Son of God's feet. He washed their feet and got scorned and eventually crucified by the high priest. Big religion, right? Traditions of men. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at me, or he that serveth? Is not he that sitteth at me the master? But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. We're going to get exactly what God Almighty appointed the Son of God. How awesome is that? For eternity. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel, much less the whole world. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, this is Peter, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that they, thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Have you ever had Satan sift you like wheat? I have. It's not very nice. It's not very nice at all. You have to cry out to God Almighty and rebuke the devil and he'll flee from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Always. Always in the name. You're dealing with demons in your house, evil spirits, whatever, in the name of Jesus Christ, or they might just thump your gourd really good. They know Jesus Christ, they don't know you. 
And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Big talk. Some big talk. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt three times deny me and then curse me. Peter, your master. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse, money, and script, and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said, nothing. Everything was great. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it. Get your money. And likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment. Sell your jacket, get a sword. Why? Times are going to be tough. You, you Christians are going to be sheep led to the slaughter. Literally, what they do in Rome, the Colosseums? Let's get some Christians. Let's throw them to the lion. Let's strap on um, bloody, bloody lamb. They like the lamb, right? Let's put bloody lambskin, the kids, the wife, and bring in the bears, bring in the lions. They, they'd bet on how long these people would last before they were torn to pieces. Christians. Wasn't very pretty to be a Christian back then. Amazing how the whole world was turned upside down by him. Then said he, now go get the person, go get the sword. For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the, the sinners, the transgress, another sinner. Jesus Christ, another sinner, hanging between sinners. For the things concerning me have an end. It'll end. Remember what he said, last thing he said on the cross. It is finished. And they said, Lord, behold, we have two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Kind of reminds me, right? You get a lot of Christians, kind of like Puritan type, whatever they are. Uh, the Bible says thou shalt not kill. So does that mean when somebody breaks into your house and they're raping your wife and they're raping your daughter and murdering, you don't do anything? Well, no, I don't do anything because I shall not kill. That's murder, okay? In the Greek, that word is murder, laying in wait to murder somebody. We're not talking about soldiers that go out and defend our rights for this country to be free. They're awesome. Thank God they killed the enemy. Kill more. There's a lot of them right now. What about me here in this house? I got my 357. I got my shotgun. Come into my house. I got my dogs, right? We'll be using them on you. You break into my house, and that's that. Period. Don't break in. We won't have any problems. Right? Right. And they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. And he came out and he went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that ye enter not into temptation. This is it. In the whole world, this is the pinnacle of time on earth when the Son of God is going to be crucified and resurrect for the world. For God so loved the world. Oh, the Israelites? The world! The heathen! And this was it. That He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth shall not perish. Everyone was on their way to perishing. Everyone was a sinner. But now you can be over your sin. You can confess your sin. And Jesus Christ's blood will cleanse. Hallelujah. And he was withdrawn from them 
about a stone's cast, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Now remember, he doesn't want it. Nobody wants to go through a crucifixion. But here's another part of it. What happens when he comes back? He slays all the wicked. Father, isn't there any other way? Isn't there any other way to deal? No. This is it. Plan of God from the beginning of the earth. The foundations of the earth. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. I used to be a um, chaplain for the uh, jail in San Diego, San Diego Central Jail, and I was telling the story. And I go, has anybody ever heard of anyone sweating in super, super, super sweat? Your whole fa- you found out your whole family is wiped out in a car wreck. There's been people that, that go into a, such a trauma and such a um, you know, miserable state that they actually sweat blood, right? This is what you, you think they're in a miserable state? What kind of state is Jesus Christ in? Taking on the sins of the world. For mankind. And I, I knew a guy who went through that. He found his wife murdered. His wife and his daughter murdered. And that happened to him. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow and said unto them, Why sleep ye now? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. Always praying. Always praying. And well, in the name of Jesus Christ, always. And well, he yet spake, behold, a multitude. And he that was called Judas, Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him, betrayed him with a kiss. There was a guy named uh, Yasser Arafat, head of the Palestinian Liberation. He'd always come up and kiss any of the leaders. Give him a big kiss, right? And then what? And <laughs> try to do anything he could to destroy him, right? Don't kiss me. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? We got our swords, remember? And one of them smote Peter, smote the servant of the high priest, and he cut his right ear off. Nice shot. He didn't split his head. He just, that's a good swordsman. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said unto the chief priests and captains of the temple and the elders which were come to him, Be ye come out as against a, what, I'm a thief all of a sudden? With swords and staves? When I was daily with you in the temple, he stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour and the power of of your father, the devil, the power of darkness. Enjoy, it'll be your last. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter Peter followed kind of far away. Didn't really want to be right, right off the bat. Didn't really want to be seen with Jesus, right? Jesus is getting beaten to death. Jesus is going to have a cross on his back to go get hung on. That don't sound fun. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. Everything's cool, right? No. 
But a certain maid, a woman, beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was one of his disciples. This man was with him. A lot of people around, Christ getting crucified, and he denied him. He denied Christ. You know what they do sometimes back then? You'll hear later in one of the Gospels, he cursed him. What does that mean? He said the GD word. No, he cursed him. He said, Jesus Christ be cursed. And when you said that, you were let go. You were free. How pathetic. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, now he's getting nervous. Man, I am not of Jesus Christ. And about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, yep, that's him, saying, of a truth, this fellow also was with him. For he is a Galilean. We can tell by looking at him, listening to him. Fisherman. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately, while he yet spake, the cock crowed on the third denial, just like Jesus Christ prophesied. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. Not once. Third time's a charm. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Imagine the next three days of Peter's life before Christ returned to save the day. I wouldn't want to be him. Probably had a lot of suicidal thoughts, I'd imagine. Hey, hey, Judas did. He was hung. And the men that held Jesus mocked him and beat him. And when they had blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Hey, prophet, prophet of God, son of God, prophecy. Who is it? Who is it that hit you just now? And many other things blasphemously spake they against him. And as soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes, all the big shot religions, all the televangelists, all the big ones, the beggars. They came saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. And he said unto them, if I tell, what does it matter if I tell you? You won't believe. Why should I waste my words now? And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. How do you think they like <laughs> How do you think they like that answer? Steam coming out of their ears, right? Oh, how we hate this one. How we hate the innocent. Kind of like aborting babies, right? We hate these babies. They're innocent. They're pure. Kill them. Then said they all, Art thou then... The Son of God, getting pretty direct here. And he said unto them, 
You say that I am. I guess I am, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, I am. What does it matter? You're going to crucify me no matter what. And they said, what need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard out of his own mouth. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. And we're probably going to take uh, just like a little short break to separate um, these two sections between Luke 22nd and Leviticus 22nd. So we're going to see in a minute. Thank you. All right. See you for Levit Leviticus 22. 